What is up, Titan aficionados and beginners alike? We don't discriminate here. But what we do do is generate excitement. And today I am excited because this is match five of our league. We are currently three and one. We are looking to pick up this win here to get some extra value. The worst we can do is lose a match and get all of our value back in the first place. So really at this point, we're just playing for the gravy. And man, would it taste good. But before we get to tasting the gravy, we got to actually play through the match. And so I'm going to jump straight into this league. So our last round, we played against Wizards of the Coast, Andrew B. And I don't know if it's possible for somebody to get that name just naturally or in order to have WOTC in the name, they have to actually be a Wizards employee. I've never tried to make a name with WOTC in, in, the, in the title. So it makes me wonder whether that was a real Wizards of the Coast employee or not. If they were, I should have told them to unban Swinner Twin. All right, we do have our game here, and we'll be on the play. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> this hand has a very quick Titan if we draw a bounce land. has two lands, an amulet, and an explorer, which I like. We already have a Titan lined up, and we have Dryad ready to go if we hit our third land drop, so... I'm just going to keep this. I just love explorer. I feel like explorer fixes everything, so... <laughs> we'll lead on Talari West here in the hopes that we can play a one drop this upcoming turn if we if we draw it, say a Sakura Tribe Scout. A Tribe Scout would be great, actually. We top deck Tribe Scout into Bounce Land and then we get a Ooh, In Inquisition's a little nasty. Um but yeah, we top deck a Tribe Scout and are able to play it and then top deck a bounce land and have Titan Mana directly after. That Inquisition's pretty rough though. We'll play Gambring. Now our hand just got a lot slower. Just straight up basic swamp Inqu inquisition feels kind of like a like a eight rack deck to me. Thoughtsies, okay. I mean this hand is pretty strong against discard effects. I'll be a little annoyed if they take explore here, just because I'll be personally offended. Not cool opponent. Not cool. Hmm. Well, we have a Dryad. And then this Vasu is going to be a Garenbrig. Well, we could copy their Stomping Ground. Yeah, I like that better. Pass it back. Well, they were able to take some things, but they weren't able to take enough. They They still need to drain the rest of my hand. What is this? A Baron Moor. Don't see that one in play very often. There goes our Titan. Ugh. Okay. Well, there goes our Titan. Back in hand. They don't necessarily know that. Should I even play the Dryad? Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and attack first. But it's possible that I should hold on to this Dryad so that if they happen to either have a Liliana the Veil or a Bloodbraid Elf into a Liliana the Veil, I can discard the Dryad. And that way, if we draw an untapped land, we have Titan immediately with Dryad in play. Um, I think it's, it's tough because I kind of want to just slam this Titan. I mean, not Titan, slam this Dryad into play, but that's weak to Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, you know what? I have faith. I'm going to top deck the land. I'll pass it back. A bounce, even a bounce land would do it here. Because we float a green using the Dryad ability with our Radiant Fountain. Pick it back up and then play it as land number two. After we play our bounce land. So. What is this? Cling to dust. That will not do it. We still need to top deck a land here. I'm a little annoyed that we don't have the... Uh... <gasps> no! I did not mean to to pass. It's not going to make a difference here, actually. Because um, we weren't going to be attacking the Titan this turn, but... Ugh. 
I don't know how that happened. But luckily, we are still A-okay. We will make the uh, play that I was talking about using the bounce land here. And we get to gain two life. Value. Here's Titan. Can we kill them? No, we used all of our land drops, so... Oh, we won. Well, we can kill them, because just resolving the Titan is good enough. Alright. So, at least one Bailoth. Probably both. Dismembers, I don't know. I've been flip-flopping on Dismember. I don't love it, actually. Maybe not. Tracker, for sure. Explosives, probably fine. Beast Withins against a potential Ashiok or Damping Sphere, I don't hate. We don't really have another way to answer Ashiok, so I'm going to bring in at least one Beast Within just to preempt it. Probably two is not bad. Eh, well, we'll see. We'll start We'll start cutting some cards. I'll cut one Summoner's Pack. Uh, one Ancient Stirrings. Some Tribe Scouts. What else? Hmm. Could just be another tribe scout. Which I think is fine. And then if we want the other beast within, we could trim a stirrings. We could also trim a sanctuary here to play around damping sphere and pillage and fulminator. I kinda like that. Is it better to have a beast within or an ancient stirrings in that case though? I'm gonna go with the beast within. Alright, let's see how this goes. This hand is pretty good. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. I'll keep it. It's pretty much what we're looking for. They probably take an amulet here. I could see them taking Summoner's Pact and then Thought Season Prime Yule Titan as well, but I mean, we're gonna make them kill this tribe scout. So. Rain six. There it is. That sucks. Crumbling Vestige is pretty good here. Play Ghost Quarter. We're not playing out our Bounce Sands so that we can play around Fulminator Mage here. If we just played a Growth Chamber, picked up our Forest, and got uh, Stone Rain, we'd just be in terrible shape right now, so. Not really going to play into that one. Lily. Oh man, we can't pack for a Bailoth. Yikes. Okay, we're going to pitch one of our bounce lands here, I think. Crumbling Vestige representing an untapped green source. So. Heatland. I didn't even notice when that went to the graveyard. Did they? I guess they discarded it to the lily. That's what it was. Hmm. I guess we're playing Talario S here. Yeah, I guess we are. This lily can be very annoying for us. Sacrifice and peatland, I'm pretty okay with. Maybe we could have Summoner's Pact for Azusa there to play out a bunch of lands. I don't know. Here, I think we're discarding the Crumbling Vestige. Yeah, that's fine. We, in, we also have to be aware of the potential to pack for and play Tireless Tracker this upcoming turn. Cavern is interesting. Now, this is not looking great. We need to get something in play to clock this Lily. We could just play Growth Chamber, pick up like Talario S or whatever, or Ghost Quarter, depending on whether we want the untapped land or not, and then plan to pack for a Bailoth if they uptick Lily, but then we lose to a Fulminator. Again, we could also just make that play where we pack for Azusa. It's a lot worse now that they have mana up, though. Although, they don't have Fatal Push available, and I don't know if the 
play that many lightning bolts, so I don't know that they have much... Like, they don't have Abrupt Decay or Trophy Mana up, so it's basically just Lightning Bolt that we'd have to play around. I kind of like the idea of Pacting for Azusa here, cause just because it does something. We'd play... We float, play Growth Chamber, pick up Forest, then we play Cavern Forest immediately, and they wouldn't be able to stop us from doing that. But then, then we'd only have Titan in hand, we'd have to discard it. So I guess we could play... We'd have Growth Chamber, uh, Talari West, Ghost Quarter, Forest, keep the Cavern in hand, and pitch it. Which is reasonable. And then if we draw an tap land, then we have Titan. Hmm. Tough. Tough. If we cast Pact for Azusa, that's the only way we don't get blown out. No, we can still get blown out, actually, by a Fulminator Mage. I guess we could try to make a line where we're able to go quarter our own land to get the second green source if we have to. So we could play Cavern, tap Cavern in these two, play Azusa, play Growth Chamber, pick up the Forest, and then play the Forest. It doesn't play around a Lightning Bolt, but then if they have something to kill our Growth Chamber, we can Ghost Quarter in response, and we'll have Cavern, uh, Snow Forest, Forest, and uh, T-West. They're asking if I have Discord. I think maybe doing that line where we leave up Ghost Quarter... I don't know, though. I think if we Ghost Quarter our own land, we're not going to make any headway here. I think... It's going to be best to get Azusa into play now. And just scoop to a Stone Rain effect. That's how we can talk about it after the match. Uh, so here we'll pick up our forest. Yep. We will pack for Azusa and cast it. And we'll play just the forest, I think. Discard Cavern, and if we... If they minus on our Azusa, then we can keep the Cavern and cast the Titan. And if they uptick, then we keep the Azusa in play, so. I guess in that case, it could have been Dryad. Hmm. Nah, we gotta pass. Maybe Dryad would have been better here. Oh, they do have the Bolt. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, we can't play a Titan this upcoming turn because we have to pay for the pack. So, well, we'll see where this gets us. Yeah, this game not looking particularly great for us. I guess maybe a line that went for Bailoth might have been better instead. Croxa, ooh. That one's really rough. Yeah, I would say this game is probably locked up now. Field of the Dead. Well, we'll play it. We have Titan mana. If we top deck a Titan this upcoming turn, then we are still most definitely in this. No, because they'll just literally minus us. Yeah, this is not looking great. I mean, if they literally minus us, they still only have a Blood Raid Elf as a clock. I guess they have Croxa as well. They have to be able to cast it, but... Uh, which pile do we want to sacrifice? 
If we sacrifice the pile with field, then the number of differently named lands that we have doesn't matter. The, the field pile is also weaker to Fulminator, so we'll sacrifice this one. Yep. We could actually Ghost Quarter their red source, because I highly doubt they play another mountain. And that might put them a ways away from Croxa. Oh, I mean, yeah, obviously with an active Renin 6, that's not going to be doing a whole lot, but... Boy, okay. Well, uh, well, we will probably lose this game. Unless we top deck Bajuka Bog now, and even then we're still facing down a pretty significant clock, so... Garen Brig. Nah, I think we can go ahead and concede here. Okay, so... What might we want to change? Obviously, losing the scout there just from them playing a Ren and Six and, and pinging it. Most terrible thing that can happen in this matchup. That's why a lot of the Tribe Scouts come out. It's a shame that we um, have the Tribe Scout in at all. But I do like having one drops in this matchup. The fact that they still saw Ren and Six makes me think that they probably didn't cut all of them either. So, I'm going to trim one more scout, I think. I don't mind the stirrings. We didn't see anything like Ashiok or anything along those lines, so I'm not completely sold on Beast Within either. I don't know what else we would want, though. Like, we could go for Dismember. It's kind of just one for wanting, and I don't think that's really putting us in the direction we want to go. Could be another Summoner's Pact, which I think is fine. Um, but, and the off chance that they do just have, like, two Ashioks or something, I might just leave the Beast Within. It might be better to cut one from a Slesnia Sanctuary. Especially with all these stirrings. Hmm. The Ghost Quarter could kill a uh, Raging Ravine, which is not irrelevant, so I'm going to submit it this way. I don't think there's anything we really want to cut here. We will play first. This hand's decent. Yeah, I like it. We can play a turn 2 Dryad and still not get blown out by Fulminator Mage here. We get to put in this amulet underneath a discard spell. Uh, we have a Titan lined up. We have a Bayloth to protect us against Liliana the Veil. So, I mean, they're obviously if they see it with a discard spell, they're not going to just walk right into it. But Alright, come on. Deck. Three drop. That's a Summoner's Pack. Huh. Does packing for Azusa do anything here? We play Crumbling Vestige, have three mana, back for Azusa, play Gruel Turf, once bounce the Crumbling Vestige, play Crumbling Vestige again, that's four mana that lets us play Bayloth, and then unless they trophy us, then we can pay for our pack. I, but that runs us out of everything that we have going, so I just don't think it's worth it to play into something like that. Did it, did it. There it goes. I wasn't sure if it passed for me there or not. Proxa. Well, we'll discard a Bayloth. <laughs> that one's a pretty easy choice. Okay, Growth Chamber. So, if we float to Grow Chamber, play a zoo, so we get two more land drops, but that's only five mana, so we're still a little ways away from doing anything with that. Uh, we still want to play a bounce land here to get to that six mana eventually. Uh, we'll just pick up the vestige here. And we'll swing. I guess they had to brute force through this Bayloth at some point in time, so... Now if they play a Lily, they can minus it, but if they play Lily here, I'm most definitely just playing Titan. <laughs> Let's see, we can play Bounce Land and have five... 
Yeah, so even if they play Lillian uptick, we can pitch the Vestige and still have Titan Mana. But no, they have Fulminator Mage instead, which is weirdly kind of fine. So we're just going to play our Ghost Quarter here, even though they have perfect information about our hand now. Better than playing out this Vestige. I'm kind of hopeful that this Bayloth can just, like, kill them, but I don't really foresee that to happen, so. Sacrifice Bayloth. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight mana, minus three for an Azusa, so that's five left over, so we can't actually play a Titan just yet. Hmm. Okay, well. We could pack for a Bayloth or something. I don't know. I guess we're just playing Crumbling Vestige. Weird. We've just been a mana short this whole time. Yeah, three. Get Azusa, play it. Uh, two Bounce Lands. It's only five mana, so yeah, we can't do it. We're passing. We'll pitch this growth chamber. Obviously not packing for a bay loss since we will not be able to pay for the pack. Blood Braid. This is probably good news. Hitting a lightning bolt is definitely good news. I think our Titan is good to go here, although they could have a push, which is quite frustrating. To play around that, we could pack for a tracker and pay and play Growth Chamber and be able to crack a clue, but then we lose to again like a, a Fulminator effect. Um, they'll have two cards by the time that they can potentially play a Fulminator, the one plus the one they already have plus what they might draw. I don't know if I'm willing to make that risk. So I'm not doing anything right now, obviously. Beast Within is interesting. I don't mind Beast Withining this Liliana. Huh. Because if we go for the Azusa right now, then we'll be tapped out for our upcoming turn. I think maybe Beast Withining on their upkeep to hit this Liliana is going to be the best play. But that still doesn't really get us forward, because we would like to be able to make another land drop here. We could just jam against their one card and hope it's not a push. Push is the... They already have a push in the yard as well. I think I'm going to make them have it. Feels weird, but... And then, if all else fails, we can still beast within, so... This feels super risky. But I'm doing it. Uh, we'll pick up the Vestige, I suppose. That's fine. We'll make it green here. And uh, it looks like we are off to the races. So. Oh, they're just dead, right? We'll get Garrison and Stronghold. It looks like making them have it might have been the correct line. We'll pick up our crumbling vestige here. They said, good games, good games. I 
I don't know if they're going to make me swing for lethal after having said good games, but... <laughs> Alrighty, well, uh, I'm going to cut out the little conversation we're having here uh, for the sake of the video. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, next time you see me, I will be talking about the deck in the post-deck tech. Alright, so we did, in fact, win the match. Great, great news. We ended up 4-1. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, that's the deck. Let me see if I can say a few things about the changes. So, first of all, now maybe I'm just spoiled after having played with four Grazers for so long, but I kind of think I prefer Arboreal Grazer to Tribe Scout in general, even though that wasn't the norm before the Lurus meta occurred. I think I'm interested in playing even three Grazers and two Scouts. I kind of like a split, just because having a few scouts is sometimes relevant. But, like, it would be really nice in the matchup like Jun to be able to board out two scouts, but still have a couple of relevant and good one-drops. Excuse me. Um, yeah, there's that. I didn't mind the the four stirrings being gone at all, to be honest. And I've been hyper-impressed by Crumbling Vestige. I'm really glad about that change. The only thing that is awkward about it is that it doesn't produce multiple like sets of two mana under a turn where you can play like a bounce in several times obviously but the upside of having the extra turn one source and all that's good stuff it's nice it's nice i'm glad about this childish tracker here it did a lot of work throughout the at least at least against the uh death and taxes opponent and i think it's a good card in general what else um engineered explosives I was playing one main back in the Loris meta because everybody was playing things like like prowess creatures. Um, there was some like I don't know. I'm not, I'm not able to articulate it very well. But there was a especially a lot of like Swiss spears and uh, Soulscar mages running around, and there were some like devoted druid decks. Uh, There's just a lot of stuff. There's like Loris Jund. There's all kinds of things that mainboard explosives was great against. But I haven't been particularly impressed by the explosives. Um, when I was going into this league, I didn't even consider cutting it. It didn't cross my mind because I was just like, oh, it's just a one of bullet. You know what I mean? Like, it just seems so normal. But I could see moving the explosives to the side. I think there are some people that are currently testing out having a pact of negation in the main. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I cut it from the sideboard entirely just because I didn't really feel like it was giving a very useful effect just because you already had to be in a position of, of you know like a commanding position or a position of power like after resolving a titan for that pact of negation to even matter and sometimes that's the difficult part in those types of matchups so i'm not sure i like say uh playing a pact of negation main i could see playing a second azusa main uh, i don't have a copy so i have uh, i'll have to buy one not a problem uh, but yeah, I could see playing a second Azusa. I could potentially see playing a fourth Stirrings or something along those lines. It might, this might be super radical and setting up for terrible top decks in the late game, but maybe the third Scout. Just play three Grazers, three Scouts. I've, that might be too much, though. That might be too much. I just, I just love that uh, Arboreal Grazer ramps you into a three drop on turn two in the absence of an amulet, which is very important even in those grindy matchups. Like, like, you would think that the scouts are there for, like, the control and grindy matchups, but if they just kill your scout, then it didn't do anything. Whereas the Grazer, despite the fact that you only get a one-shot activation out of it, so it's kind of just like a like a Mox Diamond, I believe, is the card. Let me, let me check real quick. Yeah, discard a land. Wait. No, that's not quite the right. Anyways, whatever. It's basically a, it's basically a one-mana Mox putting an extra land into play, but you have to spend a card to do so. So, I kind of... I do like that comparison, and that is a little bit weaker in the control and grinding matches, especially if you top deck it, but the fact that it lets you play your 3-drop on turn 2 is just so essential. And if I were to continue to play heavier on Grazers than on Scouts, then that makes the second Azusa look even better. Um, even going turn on Grazer, turn 2 Explorer just felt 
great, to be honest. I'm I'm a huge fan of Explorer personally. I know some people hate the card. <laughs> That's not me. You're not gonna find any uh draw a card hate on this on this channel. But yeah. The other thing is the second Vesuva, which as much as I personally enjoy it, the more I'm playing with it, I'm not sure that it's entirely necessary. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to just play a second Valakut or a second Field of the Dead, even. Um, I don't know what it would be. Possibly uh, another Breeding Pool or a Cavernous Souls, but to be frank, I don't really personally think a second Cavernous Souls is going to be the move, mostly because of its price. Like, the one Cavernous Souls has done its job, and Vesuva costs two ticks, Cavernous Souls costs 40 ticks, so <laughs> I don't know about all that. But yeah, um, I can see getting in another copy of Azusa here. As for the sideboard, I still like how all these cards perform. The disputes seemed alright. Like with any other counter spell, they're still a little awkward. I don't know. I might see what I can do to mess around with the sideboard a little bit. If we cut the explosives from the main, I definitely want the second explosives in the sideboard for sure, though. But yeah, anyways, that's way more than enough talking for the end of this video. Um, Hopefully it made some sense to you guys. <laughs> it still doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me trying to figure out what, what it is I'm about to do with this list. I definitely think there's some changes that can be made. But um, yeah, if you guys have any input on the changes and what you think I should play or what you would like to see me play, I don't know, like maybe just play a Zakama in the main deck. I don't know if I would do that. But <laughs> I mean, hey, you could suggest it. At the very least, I will look at it. But yeah. That's the end of this league with Annual Titan. I will see you again very soon for the first match of the next league. Thank you for watching. This is Red Face Menace, signing off.